settles it down, down, pass through center ice. Here comes Nathan Much. Passes it in for this to find him. Behind the net. Hurts. He'll play it along the board. He won't get out. Just the final shoot score! Colton Destefano with a goal! Great forecheck and pops it into the top. Welcome everybody to the EOSHL podcast episode number two. It is my privilege and honor to welcome uh, our second guest, uh, the owner of the Frontenac Phantoms, Colton Di Stefano. Colton, welcome to the show. Justin, thanks for having me. Good to always good to chat with you, regardless if we're on podcast or not. So, how's it going? Absolutely. Oh, it's going fantastic. You know, I've been looking forward to doing this with you for a while now, and now we're finally doing this. Uh, we're going to talk some EOSHL, maybe a little bit of NHL, just hockey in general, life. And uh, I'm going to just start off here uh, with. Where, uh, where did the root of hockey start for you? My parents tell me that uh, I would be two or three years old. I was still an only child there, but yeah, two or three years old. And uh, they'd wake up to me not watching uh, Arthur or any of those shows. I was actually on Sportsnet or TSN, whatever that was back then, and was just watching the hockey highlights in every morning. So um, kind of started there. Uh, my dad obviously played hockey growing up too, and and so I got to watch him, and then uh, yeah, as soon as I could skate, I don't remember if I was three, I guess I was three, three or four, learned how to skate, and then uh, when I was five, learned how to play, I think from the Tyke program back in Tamworth. Um, but yeah, and then it's just never left. Um, some, some close to me will say it's never left. Uh, you know, it's become more of a... Uh, less less of a hobby and more of a passion and more of a um an addiction which and there's a lot worse things you can be addicted to that's for sure so um yeah, like i can agree with you on that one that's for sure yeah but yeah just I just, now uh, yeah sorry go ahead i didn't sorry i didn't mean to interrupt you there no i just i just love the game i love the compete of it i love how it's it's not linear um i love how it's you know it's you got blades on your feet um play it outside like when there's ice on the pond so i mean it's there's a lot of different things where you can't just go throw a ball outside right so it's a lot different and uh and it's just about being canadian right so <laughs> that's that's i don't know i just love the sport all everything in now uh now being a hockey fan yourself uh what hockey team i mean i know the answer but what hockey team did you uh do you cheer for and who's your favorite player yeah, I uh, grew up, still am to this day, a Montreal Canadian fan. Um, my favorite player, I guess, always been my favorite player, uh, is PK Subban. Um, yeah, he just had an exuberance to him, uh, an excitement that he played with. Yeah, there he is on the wall. There he is. <laughs> my here here in the in the closet for now, but um, yeah, he just he just played with such passion and. Uh, and then off the ice, you know, he gave ten million dollars uh, to sick kids in Montreal. And you know, there was one summer, instead of training, he spent a whole month in Haiti cleaning up after a after a uh, uh, earthquake. And uh, you know, I know there's other stories of you know he's larger than life attitude, and you know, there's there's that too. But I just love the way he played the game. He was so passionate and. Uh, I don't know if I have that in me at all, but, uh, you know, he was my favorite player to watch. And, and right now, currently, um, I, I love uh, Arbor Jack, I actually. So um, I'm not even a defenseman, never never played defense ever. But, uh, yeah, pretty much all my favorite players have always been defensemen. I love Sheldon Surrey when I was younger. Uh, big boom and slap shot, right? And uh, oh yeah, that that was that slap shot. I remember uh, it was it was so lethal. He had that season where he put twenty six goals, and I think he set a franchise record for like most power play goals by a defenseman in a regular season. They ended up missing the playoffs that year, 
unfortunately. But he had a massive year despite being, I think it was like minus 44 or something crazy. <laughs> he was, and, and that was back in the days of a power play where it was just passed across, you know, on the blue line one timer. Like everybody knew it was coming, right? And anyways, it was just. Couldn't stop it. No, it couldn't stop it, exactly. So. <laughs> Uh, now, uh, next, uh, I'm going to go up to the next topic here. So, uh, for the EOSHL, how did it start for you in the league? I guess going back way back and I guess it was 2019 in the summer. Um, yeah, I was, me and my wife were newly married and we were, uh, she was doing a paint show or a, an art show, like a craft sale. And uh, I was flipping through my phone and she was dealing with a customer, I guess, and uh, flipping through. And there were some people that I knew in Napanee and they were, there was this draft going on and Desirano was doing this draft thing. And I was like, what is going on? I didn't know anything about it. Um, but yeah, they did a draft and I was like, oh, there's a senior team coming to Desirano. So I ended up trying out um, and I didn't make it. Um, but then later in that season, um, Maxville was short coming to play in Desirano. I think they had you know, whatever seven, eight, nine skaters or something. So they signed a bunch of guys, and um, I think through Brandon Tucker and Landon Punchard from Desirano, they both either got a hold of me or got a hold of their owner um, from Maxville and just said, "Hey, would you be willing to play?" I said, "Heck yeah, I'd love to." And so. I played that game and I think we ended up losing 13 to three. So, but, uh, it's just fun to play, you know, real hockey again with some hitting and, and some fights. And it was, you know, what I, what I wanted to do from the beginning of that season was play for Desirano. I lived in the area. Um, anyway, so then that season finished and, uh, there was only four teams at that time and, you know, Wes Carlton, Maxville and Desirano and it's quite a distance to drive between Desirano and the rest of the team so anyways I, I they were looking to expand for next season and so you know I just I said well heck there's plenty of players and of interest in in Kingston that would love to play I'm sure I play against a bunch of them in men's league and whatever and so um, I called Frontenac Arena and I said you know this is what's going on and um, would there be ice? Would it be available? Would you be interested? And, and uh, initially, I was kind of uh, nobody came back with any positive thing. Like, oh, we, we got the Flyers and we got the Fury, the girls hockey, and and nobody wants to coach it, and and uh, it would be hard to get ice time. And so, anyways, well, I just kind of answered back, said, well, listen, I'm you know, this is just. It'll build it and then they'll come was kind of my um, mentality. And, and that's basically how it happened. And, you know, I we ended up starting the team there and getting a bunch of players and people interested. And then COVID happened very shortly after. So um, that season never never took off the ground in 2020 because um, everybody didn't know what COVID was then. And, and uh, so anyways, we ended up skating Sunday nights back in Tamworth. Uh, a bunch of guys that I'd invited and a couple people, I think five or six of them from those initial skates in Tamworth that still play on the team to this day. Um, and uh, so we played, we ended up playing three or four um, exhibition games um, against uh, Smith Falls. Um, two of them in Smith Falls, one of them was in Westport. And uh, we didn't win a single one of those games. Um, the first one was the closest. It, we lost eight to five. And we were winning going into the third period, 5-4. Um, so anyways, it was a great experience. Those were during COVID times. So we had to we had to uh, tell the ranks beforehand how many fans were coming and, and put their names on a list with a phone number and make sure everyone was masked and all that stuff. And, um, but at that point, it was just so hopeful and so everybody was so joyful to just be playing hockey and, and – uh, at a high level that wasn't just men's league. Um, and then, yeah, then kind of the rest of that is, is history. We started our, our next season in Frontenac um, with 68 fans. <laughs> Everybody had to be double vaccinated and, and uh, there's people checking that at the door. And um, 
yeah, we lost our first game to Tweed, six to five. That was a really good game um, for, for both teams, really. Um, and yes, yeah, ever ever since then, we've moved to Kingston. We've gone back to Frontenac. We'll be back in Frontenac next season. And um, yeah, I'm kind of just rambling, but you know, it was it's it it has not been a linear journey. I'll tell you that. And uh, those are usually uh, the best stories, actually. So uh, wouldn't trade it for anything, really. Yeah, I know. Like when we uh, when initially, like my first year on the team as the game day operation manager was in Kingston, and then when we like went from Kingston to Frontenac, we saw a significant jump in attendance too. And you know, you think going to a larger market like Kingston, but Kingston is so diluted with hockey that it just unfortunately didn't work out there. Uh, but we did notice a significant increase in the attendance. I noticed anyway this past season. Just you know, just overall, it was trying to really gain some traction. So. That was, yep. that was uh, you know, <laughs> that was big on its own. Um, now, you kind of already answered my next question in, in a weird way here. I was going to ask you here, what was uh, the very first uh, season for the franchise like? Actually, we didn't really touch base on it. It was more like the exhibition stuff. But So what was that first season like in Frontenac, uh, you know, the, the very first one? It was – it can't be overstated that COVID was, you know, COVID was challenging. Um you know, trying to get unpolitical here, but um, just to be able to play hockey, you had to be double vaccinated and get and have proof of that just to go into an arena. Whether you're playing or not, you had to be double vaccinated to get into a arena. So that caused some issues right off the bat because uh, we had no goalies <laughs> to start the season. So, well, I shouldn't say that. A week before the season, I didn't have any goalies that fit that uh, standard. So that was tough. Um, so I ended up um, calling around, and, and that's where Mackenzie Bruce came in. Name dropping, sorry, but that's where Mackenzie Bruce came in, um, who we had not I had not seen before. I didn't know him. Um, wasn't even real. Wasn't even living in the area. Um, anyways, got a got someone I I knew through the league to contact, and and anyways, he was so interested, and and he came out and was a was a great uh, goalie for us. Um, but yeah, COVID started a lot of things tough. Um, we ne- we didn't practice. We had a few skates, but they weren't really like skates, like tryouts, anything because, because, sorry, because uh, my cat is bugging me. So anyways, the, the they weren't, it wasn't really official because, you know, you had to put all these names down. And so you, I'd book, you'd book ice time. Um, September or early August or whatever, and you book some ice time and you'd have 25, 26 names or whatever. Um, I think actually it was only 22 names because you you only have 11 in a dressing room. Um, But yeah, you put them down and then, you know, if those guys canceled, like I'd already submitted to arenas or whatever. So it was just so tough to get good looks at people, um, hold a practice with, you know, your fifth line guy is going to be taking the power play practice. Right. So it was tough. And, and it was tough on everybody. Right. Like I know every, every team that that season w- went through the same thing. Um, and then the fans, like our rank was the lowest amount of uh, fans in the whole league. 68 was not a lot. Um, doesn't really pay the bills. And, uh, but it was packed. I shouldn't say packed, but it, like we we had sixty eight minimum that first se- first season every game. Um, we didn't have a coach, uh, so that was that was interesting. Um, I had somebody lined up, and they came out, and it just didn't work out for for them personally. Obviously, COVID it, it changed a lot for a lot of people. But um, so that after our first game, you know, not having a coach, we just we literally. Myself and then our leaders, the guys that wore letters, we just picked lineups based on that. And and luckily with COVID and with just who we had, like I think we only made four scratches all season that year. Uh, and saying that there was a lot of games that we did, we had less than three lines, <laughs> so that was tough too. Um, yeah, I I mean, I'll tell you right now, like including in every season, but just the way I've run the team, you know, for better or worse is that nobody gets paid here. So that's also been a big challenge 
you know, not to get into all that, but a big challenge to compete in the league as well. Um, so that first season, you know, I think it was a pretty level playing ground for the most part of the year, the whole season, but it, it you know, it created challenges, um, that other teams didn't have. And, um, the lack of fans, the, our rink doesn't allow alcohol in the rink, not just as f- fans, but also as, um, in the dressing rooms, there was a couple times where I got stern warnings and almost got fined because of alcohol. And that's not to say anything bad about our home rink in Frontenac, but, um, it's hard to separate hockey and beer sometimes. <laughs> so, so, uh, you know, I have to take beer out of the dressing rooms and, and remind guys, Hey, like go outside, drink in the parking lots kind of thing. And, and they're reminded opposing teams and referees, the same thing. And so we had a lot of challenges that weren't really out of in my, they were out of my control, but also I'm the one that was responsible. Um, but all, overall, like it, it was a learning year. Um, we won some games we shouldn't have won and didn't weren't expected to win. And then um, a couple games we fell just short. And then obviously a couple games were total blowouts too. And that's part of the territory. But um, made great friendships and, and guys that guys on the team have made lasting friendships. You know, guys that ended up didn't know each other before that that were in each other's weddings recently. And and, uh, and that's ultimately really what we're we're about. I mean, winning a championship would be nice, but ever since that first year, like, um, we still have guys on the team from there that can see the progression we've had and where we've, where we've been to where we are now. And, and, uh, anyways, it was a really good season. The first season, um, all things considered. And, uh, anyways, we were, we were really happy with how it ended our last game of the season. We played against Desirano and, uh, I think there was over 250 fans there, so it was packed, and I think it was a close game. I believe we lost four to two, and uh, yeah, that that's the first season in a nutshell. And um, yeah, <laughs> I'm glad to, I'm glad that's not where we are anymore. But uh, it feels it feels like forever ago, really. If you think about like if you think oh. about like COVID and everything, it just feels like even though it wasn't all that long ago, it feels like it was just, you know, it feels like forever ago. Oh. I mean, when you're looking from like hockey standpoint anyway, um, you know, and then you're too, you know, you got me in the mix there and, and uh, you know, introduced me into this wonderful league and, and yes. all to the wonderful owners and players and everything. And like, it's honestly for me, it's, it's just been a, a gift that just keeps on giving. Like it's, it's just great to be around this organization, you know, um just yeah, so not to not to steal you away from that but like you know as an owner as a manager as running the hockey team like you send a lot of emails or a lot of text messages and you know blindly like hey can i get your this guy's number that you have and it'll come for me and a lot of people don't know who i am and that's great i, I like it i don't really have any i don't know my name's not notable around here or whatever like i didn't play a whole lot of junior at all and i didn't you know i haven't coached anywhere and whatever so all that being said like you send a lot of messages a lot of emails they they fall on deaf ears you don't ever hear back whatever or it's a polite no or quick dismissal so um me i had played i think once against you and and drop in beer league and i don't think we've been really connected other than i just knew who you were and and then uh, walking through the mall and then um got a new phone through kudo when you would work in the mall and and uh i don't even know if we connected then other than you had talked about um that you were happy talking about the hands yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so then once we decided to move to kingston um i just i think we were friends on facebook or maybe we weren't uh, i can't remember how it is but i sent you a message and, you know, not really thinking much of it, like, hey, you know, would you be interested in this? And I had no idea about your history that you worked at the Bell Center. I just knew you're a Habs fan. I was like, oh, we can get along. Like, hockey, Habs fan, whatever. And, and lo and behold, like, all the all the stuff and, and where you are now, like, I had no idea. And that's nothing to say, hey, look at what I did. Like, it's just, it's crazy the amount of, sometimes you send an email and it goes nowhere. And other times you send a, 
a Facebook message and, and here we are. And, you know, like, it's just so cool how that that's happened, especially, you know, for you, right? Like, it's just, you know, Oh, it's, it's been, like I said, it's just been a, an incredible journey. And like, I didn't know like this path that you brought me on in the COSHL league that is going to lead me to all these wonderful opportunities. And, yeah. you know, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's again, like, this is all because of you really. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's because of a lot of things. And, and I'm just, I just luckily got to be, get to be a part of other people's story. Like I knew Billy too before, cause he had come out to a group. I won't speak for him, but uh, part of a, a recovery hockey program. And uh, so anyways, I knew Billy like well before I got married, well before COVID and all that. Um, and he was a goalie and he made a couple glove saves on me over the years. And so, uh, yeah. but then, you know, and then we lost touch between then and then and now, but um, he, you know, I didn't really know all of the stuff he went through personally. And um but here we are again, back back together. In full a way. circle. Yeah, it's full come full circle, right? Like it's just cool how hockey hockey does that, and really hockey's just I guess a vehicle of just life, man. Like it's just one avenue, right? So yeah. Now, next thing I'm gonna ask you here is uh, why the Frontenac Phantoms? So, so like the the team name, and of course, uh, like where did the name and the logo transpire from? That's a good question. Um, Really, I, I just knew that if we we're going to Frontenac, like you can't you can't go in with to be a purple team, right? Like you can't. So like the Flyers are orange, the Junior C Flyers were orange, uh, the Fury, you know. Although they have a little bit of a different look, like they're still kind of, you know, the the Flyers logo esque kind of, right? So everything kind of, you know, the word Frontenac even is is slanted with some with some lines to it. So it's all, you know, flyers. So I knew that had, you had to be orange. You had to kind of match that kind of thing. And then I just, I really, it was kind of a, I think the words alliteration, I think I'm not an English major, but you know, F and F and PH, right. So that kind of sound, I just, yeah. um, honestly, actually, I, I thought about naming it the front neck doc spiders at one point. Cause I thought that would be sweet. Cause there's <laughs> that'd be very spiders. different. Well, different like really cool you could you could play that up to look like halloween caught like a uh, jersey you know with some with some webs but i thought that would be an ode to kind of like um all the cottages and lakes around here like you know lots of dock spiders but yeah the phantoms just seem to roll off the tongue and 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 fit well and obviously the the, the flyers um their ahl team is the phantoms too and uh, i don't know and then the logo itself, I can't say it was a huge Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles fan, but uh, my favorite character on the Ninja Turtles was Casey Jones. And so he's, he's pretty awesome. He's pretty sweet, right? He, he, for whatever reason, you know, the New York, the New York uh, Turtles fighting against rats, right? The whole story of it, the lore of it. And then there's a you know, a human that wears a mask and has hockey sticks and baseball bats and fights off bad guys. Like it's just, it's the whole thing's cool. I've always liked that. And, and, uh, um, Oh, what's the name? Brian Elliott was a goalie for the Sens and the Flyers. And anyways, his, his mask has always featured a Casey Jones, um, you know, picture on it. So I just kind of love that. And, and so, and I reached out to a guy, um, that did logos and, and word art for lots of things in the city. And he, uh, I just told him like, think Casey Jones, think the, uh, Philadelphia Flyers and, and, you know, put something together. And that's, that's what he came up with. And, and to this day, I love it. I think it could use, not use some tweaks, but you, you know, sometimes it, it's good, good to be, to refresh it at some point. Right. And, uh, but yeah, I've always, I've always thought it was a cool logo. I didn't want to just, copy something i didn't want it to be a shield i didn't want it to be same with their jerseys i didn't want to just you know a third or a third or a half of the nhl jerseys are all the same just different colors right different same scheme everything's chicago blackhawks style stars just same piping just different colors right and uh and some of them you can't mess with great jerseys right but at, at the same time like i wanted something a little bit different a little bit original a little bit 
my own thing. That's kind of how I've always lived my life too. But, but, uh, yeah, I know some people are not a fan of the, uh, convict orange, <laughs> but, uh, you know, there's, We're there not is gonna a name who that is. <laughs> no, there's a few of them, but, uh, definitely, definitely one of them. But, uh, yeah, I plan on getting a black set of jerseys, and I've never been a fan of black jerseys per per se. But uh, I I shouldn't say that. I should I was not a fan of all the teams that get blacked out jerseys. You know, obviously some teams are black, um, and that's fine. But uh, yeah, we're gonna make these next jerseys something that uh, again aren't aren't too out there, but at the same time are gonna be like wow, those those they don't They're clean. You no, know? so yeah. Yep. Now, uh, a big thing for yourself, uh, what are some like challenges you face as, as an owner of an EOSHL team? We don't have enough time to talk about all the challenges, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Um, so, all right. So I'll go to the next question here. No, no, we, um, so, yeah. Whatever you want, but yeah, no, it's, yeah, go ahead. Uh, okay, so, um, Short-term goals, long-term goals. What what do we see here for for Frontenac? Yeah, I mean, I don't I don't know how long I'll be in this chair. Like honestly, it's I got kids now, and hopefully my my son's gonna be turning four. But hopefully, he wants to play hockey and love hockey like I do, and you know, hope, won't force him into it. He does know how to skate now, which is really good and really just cool being a dad, getting to skate with him and play. He loves. He loves shooting the ball in the kitchen, and uh, although he likes using the stick as a sword, more more or less. But, um, but yeah, like I, I long term, like I'd love to raise the cup and win a championship. Like that would be great. Um, I think back to your old your question, I just shut you down on is, uh, you know, you can't at least the way the rules are written right now it's kind of impossible to win with, with, uh, no pockets, no wallet. And, uh, so, you know, it's, which is unfortunate. Like, I, I mean, at any level, I mean, the, the classes, the classiest teams in the leagues in all leagues win, right. You don't see poverty franchises. You know, I don't say that to be rude on myself, but you don't, you don't see those teams win. And, uh, so, we have big plans short term and long term to at least not just be able to pay our bills, but to be able to pay them ahead of time and then have leftovers um, to at least works to the players and also to, to fans. Right. Um, And I thought we've done a better job of that this past year and, and uh, knock on wood, we still have some things to, to sort, to sort out, to settle, to, to plan better, to make things, you know, better like you know we went to Barry's Bay this past year and uh twice and uh you know we've got a great group of guys that will drive up there and and carpool together and uh you know we didn't take a bus like other teams and and each game each game we weren't sure a player right like we so we brought up a full lineup we brought up staff like coaching staff yourself and Billy like you know like there's no so that that to me is honestly, it's you could you could look at that and uh, see a lot of joy from that, like because you know, and other and other years, even this past year, you know, we would go not even half the distance to Tweed, to you know, to Gananoque, to you know, close teams, and we didn't have a full lineup, and uh, you know, the score uh, reflected that, right? So. Um, where you go up to Barry's Bay with a full lineup and scratching guys and uh, like guys that were scratched went to Barry's Bay with us. Um, it says a lot about the guys we have, but I say all that to say like that week, the first week before that I had been collecting beer cans just, you know, through our team and, and uh, other games where we'd go as the away team or I just collect cans. But then uh, because of this weird thawing winter we had, I would, I live on a kind of a side road in Napanee and, um, you know, I, I spent a couple of days walking around and I made 40, 50 bucks, you know, just in a couple hours collecting beer cans. And that's how much of when I say I don't have pockets as an owner, like anything to help pay for a few gas cards and buy some pizza and stuff. And, and, uh, 
you know, pizza and pizza and some cold, cold brews, they go a long way. And, and also, uh, we practice every year this or every week this year and, uh, didn't charge the guys. You know, I'm not here to share all my secrets, but just, just to say like, not, you know, compared to other teams and what the challenges are and, and long-term goals, they're all, to me, they're all connected, right? Like what do guys, not everybody thinks like me where like me, if I'm not running this league, I have to pay 500 bucks to go play Kingston men's league hockey. Right. And you play once a week and some nights it's 10 o'clock at night on a Wednesday. Wow. That's great. Uh, you know, or you can come play here for free and play competitive and have fans and, and, you know, not everybody thinks that way. And I get that. And it's a different, not everybody wants to get hurt. And, uh, you know, some people are over the compete and that's fine. That's not for everybody. I'm not here to, I'm not here to hold your hand and, and, uh, convince you to come play. Like I'm not going to beg people to play. Um, but you know, it's kind of a call to say like, we've have great guys here and guys that, like you say, would drive to Barry's Bay and, and not expect a thing. Um, but there are other guys that, uh, you know, on, are on other teams because of other reasons. And I, it's, it's unfair. It, it, and it reflects poorly, I think on, on other teams, on other leagues, on other, on everything. And, uh, you know, here I am, you know, clamoring for, to be fair and stuff. And I don't care if it's really fair. I just, I just think it's better for everybody if there's a little bit more parity better for everybody you know every team would would have more fans if you know there's a few more goals scored every team would have you know more money because more fans are in the building and every team you know it wouldn't just be the same same teams in the finals every year and and you know so i don't say all that to say that there's problems but i but for us to 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 challenge um to be competitive to to um yeah, that's the that's my goal to to challenge to be competitive. But you know, there's there's challenges to get there, and um, and really, honestly, I believe this too. If we didn't practice every week this this year with with Donnie running things, like you know, our record would be even worse if that's possible. <laughs> so so like you know, that goes without saying. Like Don's Don did a great job, and and guys showing up, you know, in snowstorms and driving. We have guys that aren't from Frontenac extended front neck region that we're driving out to practice on a Thursday night at nine o'clock at nine 30, I should say. And that just wanted to get better, but also wanted to be with the guys. Like there was, that's, it says a lot that we had guys that wanted to do that. And we're willing to do that. Not just once or twice, like most of the season that would drive that far. And, and uh, like I said, on a weeknight and just sweat it out for an hour and try to learn something and but also just because they wanted to see the other guys in the room and and that's you know i don't know if you're going to ask me this but i i figured you would like it's the team's a family and and it's not just the guys on the ice and you you're part of that family right so um Yeah, yeah i can definitely say like you know being part of that last season, you know, you can tell i know that was one of my goals to help you and the organization was to try and create a new culture I know from the previous year to this past season, it like you look at the roster up and down, it's almost completely like I was looking at the roster from the year before. I'm like, I don't remember most of these guys because a lot of these guys were just fillers for guys who didn't want to go on the road trips and so on. So this past season, I really felt that we had this really big uh, culture change where, again, it was just like you said, ELE, everybody loves everybody. Yeah. And really, I think it, you have to really have a true buy in to really um you know for, for the team right and you know I, I really felt that you know like uh steve norman for example and uh hayden kelso traveling up from uh, bowmanville like that area you know yeah. to come to practice was huge and we had um uh, we, we had um adam from the u.s uh come out to practice you know and like just yeah. You know, it just says a lot about the character of our team that we had this year and the positivity that we had. And um, it was a really fun past season, I'm going to say. Oh, I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, I don't know if there's really a question there, but, it, you know, like we – technically the, the record, we only won two games. We got a free game uh, from the forfeit that from the center Hastings, but um, 
yeah, like this year was the most fun. I myself, I know you, I know other people have would say the same thing. Like this was the most fun we ever had. And and that's not to say anything bad about people that aren't here that were that were from last year because I'm I still consider myself friends with other people. I I don't think I've ever treated anybody poorly. Um, personally, I mean, I know there's been some things that I wasn't necessarily a part of, but um, again, reflects on me and, and try to separate different hat from an owner to a to a friend, right? Like that's that's an, that's another thing that I'd spend an hour talking about that. That's you know, you learn a lot of things about being an owner and being a friend, um, and that they're not the same thing at all all the time. But uh, but yeah, this year, like you were a huge part of that as well, like changing changing the culture and you mentioned ELE, like, uh, one of my favorite, well, my favorite, uh, comedy actor, obviously Will Ferrell. Um, uh, but, but, uh, one of my favorite movies, semi-pro, like everybody love everybody. And, uh, that whole movie, like, I don't, there's so many parallels to our team, to that, that movie, like <laughs> traded people for a washing machine. Like, you know, like, um, <laughs> yeah, guys, guys that have won something, but like, doesn't mean, doesn't mean crap because you know you're on the bench the whole time or or then other guys that were destined for greatness but really needed to be humble like there's so many parallels to that movie to our team and uh really to this league right like so uh, but yeah everybody love everybody doesn't i i think stands i don't it doesn't require any comments like that that's pretty standalone no. right it, like it's it, it really is now right? as an owner as an owner, owner for yourself is there a specific, like, let's say, memory or highlight that stands above anything else? Now, now, again, you know, you mentioned like, you know, the two different hats. There's the owner hat, and then there's the player hat. What is a moment for you as an owner that you can say, "I'm really proud of that moment"? Um, I guess our first ever win, um, and most people that were there aren't even a part of the team anymore. But our first ever win was in Glencarry. Um, that was in our first season. Um, so that would have been what, what, 2021, I guess. Yeah. And, uh, went up there with three lines. Um, so I got a lot of minutes that night, which is not something you could always say, but yeah, I played center and I, you know, I was over 50% in the dot. I got a little dust up and, uh, I think we won six to four. Um, and that was really cool. Um, kind of validated everything that we had started and guys I brought in and everything. And um, Glengarry's not close to us, right? Like that's the far two and a half hour drive um, from at least from my house, probably two hours from Kingston. But um, so yeah, that was a good one. Um, just going by timelines, um, I, I I wasn't able to play this game, but we there was that first season got cut sh shorter because of COVID uh, in our area. Ontario just shut down again, middle of the season. Yeah. So we had to go down to 18 games or 17 games or something. And then when we restarted, because they did like a 30-day, everything's closed and they're going to reopen. And they reopened on a Monday night, I think. Um, so they reopened everything on a Monday night and us and Desirano were slated to play. And and so we ended up playing that game on a Monday night. Um and we we come out of that, and I was unfortunately unable to be there because I was exposed to COVID. Never did get COVID ever, but I was exposed to it, so I couldn't go anywhere. So I was watching the game on. Unfortunately, couldn't watch USHL TV back then, but I was watching just on the the ticker, seeing the scores. And um, Jordan Torres ended up scoring a shorthanded goal to go put us up four three with like eight minutes left, and we we won. Uh, stunned Desirano. That was a sweet as an owner, like not even there, couldn't, couldn't be there. Anyways, that was a sweet game. Um, you know, the good moments of, of our last season in Kingston, like starting the year two and oh, like that was, it's like, wow, I didn't expect, I, I wouldn't, I, who am I to say I didn't expect things, but like, you know, I wouldn't have, I, I didn't know we'd start two and oh, like that was great. And then obviously we, we, we didn't win a game then the next 10 or 11 games in a row. That was, that was a tough slog there, but uh, those first two games, that was, that was crazy. Jake got his first win. And then that, the next game, you know, Zach scored six goals and Jake stood on his head. And, and uh, you know, that was, that was a great game to be part of too. And um, 
been this past season, like, um, starting, starting off with a win. Um, Jake was unreal again that game. Um, Kaufman scored four goals. Um, we had Linus too, put up a few points too, our finished sensation. Like that, you could, there's another thing with Linus, like, didn't even know what to expect. You know, I don't even know what the connection was again, or who I think you, you messaged for me. Him. You messaged him. Too. I found him through Facebook. Yeah. I found him through Facebook. I saw this comment on there saying like looking for a men's team to play for. And I reached out to him and he said, you know, I asked him what level of hockey he played and he ended up being, oh, I played semi pro in Finland. I was like, I messaged Donnie and Donnie's like, yeah, I'm going to come out to practice. <laughs> and the rest is pretty much history. Like we got him out to a couple practices. And then so like, Wow, you, like obviously the way he talks, like you can hear it, his his accent and and uh, but like if you didn't talk to him or even look at his face and you just watch the way he skates or or handles a puck, you're like wow, like you don't look like a Canadian, like nothing, like I don't mean that rudely. You just like you, you skate like a European skater, like he he's effort- looked like Saku Koivu. <laughs> yeah. Yes, he did. Yeah, so another ex ex cab there no. But- now, as a player, what's a mo- what's a memory for you that stands out as a player? For yeah, you, yeah, getting in my first fight. I don't know, uh, scoring scoring my first EOSHL goal last year against uh, Gemmel. <laughs> a big Gemmel, yeah. And Gemmy's now now on our now now part of the Frontenac Phantoms. I remember that you actually teed up on a slap shot coming down the left side, I believe. And uh, I don't know where you shot it, but I just remember it beat him. And I remember seeing the celebration. I ran across around the rink to congratulate you on that because I was so thrilled for you. Full season. And that for- game, and that game, we came back. And that game, we came back uh, being down three to one going into the third period. I remember saying in the second intermission, Des Toronto's going to Toronto Maple Leafs lead. Yeah, yeah. And I think Grona scored two, and and the game winner. Like it, it was a great game, like really good game, and. Uh, yeah, that that memory comes to mind. My first fight this year comes to mind. I mean, I've been in a couple, you know, dust ups. You were in a scuffle. You were in a scuffle against Smith Falls in the playoffs, but it wasn't like an actual fight. But uh, I remember uh, you look like Brendan Gallagher in there with you know coming out of the pile and going to the box and they're chirping you. Yeah. That's all I remember. I'm like, it looks like Gallagher out there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Crappy. Yeah. No, I remember. No, uh, that was fun. Uh, I remember last year we went to Bytown, and I hit a guy so hard he didn't see me coming. Hit a guy so hard he he blew my visor up, um, just for the ways. Yeah. So I, I had to skate off the ice with a no helmet on, and everybody was giving me the their team and our team like oh like what a hit, and then like had to come back with a weird white cage visor was or white caged helmet. Finish the game. That was a weird one, but but. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Like, there's so many memories, right? Like, I'm not I'm not on for too many goals. So, um, scoring scoring goal against Gananoque this year it was was fun. And, uh, anyways, yeah, I, I it's it's I wouldn't say it's the way to go, but I I would say like being being able to be on the ice as much as I as often as I am, um, it gives me a different feel of just being an owner up in a press box and. Uh, you know, I've said to Donnie and said to Coach Jordan and, and anybody that's ever had authority over me, like, don't put me in unless I earn it. And I think that's been more than fair. And, and I know my role and all that. And all that to say, like, it just it, it helps me to, to be able to evaluate and see the game differently when I'm out there at the same speed or can see the game down there and, and can rather than evaluate from the stands or whatever like this way i can be part of the boys and also be you know compete and then also like hey i'm not a power play guy so you know like it's i think it's just for me it's the best of both worlds and it's not necessarily the you know the way of how things should be but uh for us it i think it, it works for me and and i really enjoy both having both being a player and being having my hand on the steering wheel as well. So who would you say like your your style of play? Like if you look at the NHL, who would you say that your game like you compare your game to? Um it's a good question. Really good question. Um Casey Sezekis comes to mind. 
he was somebody I loved in, in junior, like in playing for Team Canada, World Juniors, um, kind of a, play the same role then as he does now, kind of a fourth line, third line, kind of bump and grinder and put puck in that when he has the opportunity to. Um, I like playing center more than wing, but um, that involves a lot of skating. Uh, it's always been something I'm not great at. Uh, yeah, I, a big – Big Italian king, uh, Michael Pizzetta, a little bit. Uh, yeah, he's he, he's got to grow the hair a little bit more. I got <laughs> yeah, hair like he does, but uh, you know that we were at the our award ceremony the other night um, at Rax and watching the game. He did not do good in the fight, but he is not afraid to step in the ring and fight Ryan Reeves or fight Nick Delorie or you know any of the big boys. And I don't know if I'm necessarily there. I remember not fighting uh justin sawyer there this past year um but um definitely had some choice words for him that's for sure (laughs) oh yeah yeah. i knocked him over a few times but yeah just you know i don't i try not to be afraid of too much but you know i don't claim to be a a fighter or anything but just i like to bump and grind and and uh and hit i love to hit i've always loved to hit and uh you know i try i try my best to play both ends of the rank as much as possible. Like I'm not someone to get a whole lot of points. So if I can't play defense either, then, then, uh, you know, don't serve the play. So one thing I would say our good friend, Billy bull will say about you is you're a pit bull out there. You're always on the four check, always four checking hard and always going for that puck. Try. You gotta try. You're not going to have effort. <laughs> <you know? laughs> nice. Now, now, for uh, my last question here is uh, looking into the the crystal ball here. What do we uh, we're going to see next season out of Frontenac? Well, I mean, I mentioned all the challenges, but at the same time, like we've got, you know, there's only three or four players that have said they're not coming back, and and really, those three or four players, like two of them, are moving different countries, different provinces. So, like that, you know, like those are uncontrollable things. Right. So we're going to have different people step up, like you're going to do changes. And, uh, you know, after three years of being last place in the division, um, changes is inevitable. And I think you're going to see a lot of change in the league regardless, but, but change is inevitable. So we'll have to do our best to, to make some changes. And, uh, but, uh, like, you know, looking in goal, like, our goaltending is not the problem. They, any guy that's been in our crease, um, especially last year too, like, you know, Dino, uh, Gemi, um, Kenny Dryden at the end there, and, and obviously Jake before that, like, you know, every single guy there, you know, just battled so hard and, and stopped way too many pucks. Like, <laughs> you know. Never. Mine's, just, mine's of the Habs a bit, you know, with Carey Price, Cheryl Halak, Jose Theodore, Patrick Wall, like, you know. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> it reminds me of that a little bit. They they just, they never complained. There was a couple times maybe they, they were not happy, but, I mean, they, you know, they just played played the best they could and stopped so many pucks for us. And uh, and uh, the ones they let in, like, didn't have chances on, right? So, like, just so grateful for them. Um, so getting them some help defensively you know if we were to you know i don't want to say huge goals or huge you know whatever because life comes at you so fast and And we've had so many injuries like there's there's one thing if we could just be healthier that'd be great Um, i know we got some older fellas and some younger guys too but um you know just not having injuries anymore that would be great um and that comes with the territory but hopefully have some some health um, help us out um and then uh just just get some guys that like everybody here is committed there's no doubt about that but just having like we went into the playoffs and uh like top four scorers weren't able to be there for the, whatever reason right so and nothing against those guys but it's hard to compete when uh we 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 don't score a lot of goals to begin with and then miss our top four and had some had some key injuries on defense too, and uh, you know it's just hard to compete when when our top players aren't in the lineup, right? So um, it's competitive hockey, right? Like next man up, 
right? So we're not going to ever fold or not show up with the team. Like there's, we got pride there. We're always going to show up and, and battle and, and do our best. But uh, that, yeah. that's one thing I always say about a front neck, like even dating back two seasons ago where I dressed as Jake's backup. We I think we went in with like four skaters and I think we had to like, find some guys to sign for that game otherwise like because we didn't we just didn't have enough it was up in in chesterville actually and that's where we actually met josh tap actually yep. what a great skater and what a great like acquisition that was oh. uh you know looking looking forward like he just had a tremendous season this past season but just to show you like we as, as an organization we we're not a team that's ever going to be like yeah we're not we're not we don't have enough guys we're nope. we're going no, and we we just there's there's guys that wear letters on our team too that that have shown like they'll do whatever it takes. Like we got two guys that have never had never missed a game. Martin had to get suspended and <laughs> but, unfortunately uh, with the with the collision with uh, with Rhino, unfortunately, and uh, that was it was an accident that just went went the wrong way. Hundred percent was an accident, right? But and then much never missed a game and. Um, but yeah, just like getting a little bit more of that, where like this is their what they want to do, right? Like get some more of those guys, and um, would be good. And uh, but yeah, we gotta score more goals. Um, like I said about Donnie with our practices, like those were highly attended. Like for the most part, there was you know over fourteen guys plus two, always two goalies, sometimes three or four. So we'd have little mini games too at the end of this practice, but. But yeah, we just those were we those are fun, <laughs> right? I think we just I think the biggest thing is uh, we there's guys that love each other and we really get along, but we need to play more as a team. Bottom line, no matter who's in the lineup, there's been a lot of passes go astray, or this guy's thinking that he should have been curling, and that you know, there's so, so chemistry is hard when you're always in and out of lineup, and and uh, you know, you look at some teams in this in these playoffs. This past year, like, you know, there's got there's like 15 of their players played every game, right? So, and then it's like only four or five of the bottom guys, or maybe they're not even bottom guys, they're just with suspensions or injuries, but not many guys missed. And that's something that we've never experienced, right? So, this past year was probably our one of our best years of that. But again, there's always injuries and always things, and I get it, but again, consistency would be you know, top of my wish list. So oh no, I lied. This this is my last last question. Did oh, you watch the uh did you watch the finals and what did you think of them? Absolutely I did. Um they were great. You know, you guys did a great stream. Like I love Bob Cole. He was my childhood and 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 Billy like sounds like him, but also Billy's just like his own thing and it's great. So yeah, you guys did a great job together doing color and then uh, you on the ice with the championship thing. That's just like made it like real. Like it just made it like so cool. You got to experience it with it. And you could tell some of like maybe the Ganaka guys were like, woohoo, I won this cup. But also like some of them were like, this is the best thing I'll ever win ever. Or this is the last thing I'll ever win. Right. So that's, it was just so cool to see that. And so hats off to both of you and, and James obviously too. Um, but yeah, no, it was, it was great hockey. And, uh, I wouldn't say I'm surprised, but like there's anybody that's ever played Gan, you usually see the penalty minutes, you know, in the in the box score. It wasn't that, and it really wasn't right. And and another thing too is their penalty kill was spot on. They played that box perfectly, and also goaltending from Jake was what we expected him to be like when he went there, making that uh Mark Andre Fleury like save late stages of you know the game to keep it where it was you know was a real difference maker there it, it was just it was great hockey right like there was some there was some tough stuff and that's that's to be expected you know same team reaching the finals every year and and so there's familiarity there and guys you know competing against each other I love seeing you know Gus and Duchesne and and Brown they all oh, went yeah bunch of times and but those were those were in some intense battles out there where me and billy are just saying continuously like this is it, it's it's like a, a, a war on ice right now between all those guys it was it was fun and, and plus like that that atmosphere in chesterville was just unreal like the fans the chance it was it was unreal and like when i see that i'm like man i just want that like 
as myself, you know, like doing the game day stuff and creating those atmospheres. I'm like, this is what I'd love to bring to front deck, you know, like have fans like that, you know, so yeah. maybe sometime soon. It was so good. Like every, I have nothing bad to say about it at all. It was really good, good hockey to watch. It was competitive. It was really goals. It was great saves, great, good hits, good everything. Like nothing, I have nothing bad to say about it. great Jersey matchups. I mean, not fan of oh. really, Day, but I mean, great, like great, the contrast is great. Um, I only saw one or two, you know, maybe questionable non calls or, or calls, you know, that I saw or whatever. And uh, I mean, I didn't watch every single second, but I, I tuned in every every live stream you guys did. And uh, you know, I just I really liked it. I thought it was it was a great final. Obviously, going five games, and uh, you know, just it's great hockey. Hopefully, uh, hopefully we can see a different different team or teams in the finals next year. So. <laughs> Honestly. Well, Colton, it's been a pleasure. Thanks again for coming on. Uh, you know, uh, big things coming up for this upcoming season. Again, uh, it's, this has been, uh, it was definitely a wonderful ride this past season. Anyway, thanks again for coming on. Thank you, Justin. And, and thank you for all you do. For not us, us no but, but the league as well. Like everybody's absolutely because of everything you do. So, can't wait for fans if you oh sorry go ahead no i was just saying you can't wait to see who's uh guest number three so hey it's it's, it's gonna be uh i'll give you a little hint uh he wears number 16 that's all i'm gonna say uh, and i'm not gonna I, oh man sorry? 11 million. Uh, that could be anybody that could be that could be anybody he he scores a lot of goals but Fair i'll enough. leave it to that now, uh, fans, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the EOSHL uh, TV right YouTube channel, the wherever, wherever, it may, wherever it may be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, fans.